Afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Who has been and seen me before? Oh, God, I'm going to tell you all the same stuff. Uh, uh, firstly, thank you very much for inviting me back. Armada Con was the first convention I ever did, uh, about three years ago, I think. Two yeah, years. Was it? Um, and um, made a kind of big impact on me, and I've been to lots of other conventions since then. I think I will be now scaling them down because they can take over your life completely. Um, and I still have to work to make a living. Um, so um, I won't be doing too many more, but thank you very much for the invitation. For those of you who don't know me or don't know about me, my name is Richard Bonehill. I've worked in the film industry for about 30 years. I started off um, working as an extra uh, and a double. Um, I was skilled in horsemanship and swordsmanship, so I did a lot of doubling in the early days for leading artists. And then as the years gone by, I've uh, specialised and I'm now a swordmaster. Um, as you get older, all the kind of stunt work it hurts a lot more. So what I do now is employ young men to do it for me. And I tell them what to do. And ladies, of course, not just men. Um, what I want to do today is try um, and tell you, give you an outline of what I do, give you, it's, it is kind of channeled mostly about sword work, give you an idea of the history of sword work in the movies, um, and also how I work. Please feel, we, I know that we have a question and answer session kind of schedule, but please feel free to kind of ask at any time whatever you want and I'll try and help out. Um, the credits that I've worked on, in my early days, one of my first films was the original Star Wars trilogy. So in that, I did a lot of running about, firing guns, falling over, mostly falling over, getting killed, killing myself. Um, I worked on films such as Highlander, uh, Indiana Jones, um, and a few others as well. So quite a lot of big American movies which at that time were made over in Great Britain. A lot of people think they were all made in America, but most of the big blockbusters were actually made in Europe. What I actually do as a sword master is I choreograph the fights, train the actors, employ stunt doubles. I have to work with every kind of department um, in, on a production. So what will happen is, first of all, the producer will ring me up, uh, and the director and say, are you available? Would you like to do this? Have a look at the script. They send me a script. Um, uh, I have a look. And unless I have kind of have any big reservations about the morality of it, I normally say yes. We then talk about money, which is about the only bit I don't like in my job. I consider I have the best job in the world, without a doubt. But arguing with people over money is just like, Sorry. it's all right. <laughs> um, I always quote too much, they always quote too little, and we always end up at the same figure in the middle somewhere. <laughs> but, um, and so many productions now, in fact I had one yesterday email me, they want to make this big, um, epic, a new version of Treasure Island, and they want it to kind of look like Hollywood, and then at the bottom of the email it says, oh we have no money. <laughs> I don't know why they're ringing me then. But, um, it's always a battle about production values, what you can actually get on the screen, because filming is so expensive nowadays. Once I start in, I'll break down the script, I'll talk to the director about it, make sure we're both on the right track, which is really, really important, because sometimes I could read a fight and think it's a really serious, bloody fight, and in fact, it's a comedy, and I haven't actually grabbed hold of the fact that it's a comedy. So you could end up doing something completely wrong. I would then source all the weapons, which means that I would work with the costume department and with the props department, because fighting weapons are very, very different to obviously real weapons or stunt weapons, which are different again. I'll explain a bit more about that later. Um, I then go and see the designer and find out what horrendous set he's got for me 
because normally there'd be boulders on the floor or wet leaves or any kind of, you know, the designer will think, I want this to look absolutely fantastic. That's his job. He won't have one thought for what is actually going to go on in that location. So I'll have a look at the set, hopefully if it's built. <coughs> Most of the time it's just a sketch on a piece of paper. And then I'll start choreographing the fight. I also liaise with the costume department, because there's no point in designing a fight if you find the fellow's in a suit of armour and he can't lift his hands up further than that. So you can't do anything up in the air. Um, I then, when I've done all of that, started training the actors and got the stunt guys involved. Um, I then show it to the director, see what he thinks. I try and leave that to the latest possible. So I can say to him, no, can't possibly change it now. Because <laughs> directors always feel like they want to input on it, uh, which is not always a good idea. Um, it's far better if he leaves me alone to do what I know to do best. I then draw a plan of it, which shows which direction the fights are going in, and I'll work with the cameraman and the director of photography. Um, so he knows what angles I particularly want, because there are certain things in fights that don't work on one angle, they work on another angle. And for dramatic emphasis, you want it to work, obviously, and make the best fight you can. Um, and that's it, really. Then you get the actors to do it, hopefully. Um, and very, very important, you work with the sound department to make sure that the correct sound is put on afterwards. Most fights do not have actual sound on. We record sound as a guide track, and then the Foley artist will put the sound on afterwards. Number of reasons for that. Basically, the swords that we use as real swords as well don't make a very good noise at all. Um, if, if you have a real sword, uh, for instance, this one, which Barry has kindly lent me for the moment, what you have is a steel blade with a wooden handle covered in leather. The whole idea of that is the wooden handle covered in leather takes away the shock when you hit somebody. Unfortunately, it also takes away the noise. So it doesn't make a nice ringing sound. It makes quite a dull sound. If you had a weapon which was completely metal, the whole thing was in one, in metal, it would sound wonderful. It would ring like a bell. Unfortunately, every time you cut into something, your, your wrist would go like that. So the noise normally is put on afterwards. OK, that's a kind of quick resume of how things work. Now, I've brought along seven clips of different movies, which have been the most influential as far as sword fights are concerned. Um, those who saw me before will probably be looking at the same films as I showed you before because they are still my favourites and the ones that made the biggest difference. When I was young, and there's some of you probably about the same age as me, not many, we used to go to something called Saturday morning pictures. Yes? Yes! In London, which I think was sixpence or something. And it was, it was chaos. There were fights and... Uh, people in the balcony melting ice cream and pouring it on the people down below and peanuts everywhere. But you had these wonderful films, um, not only kind of old Hollywood films, but series that used to be on. You had the villains, you had the baddies, and all the kids will be there booing at the villains and screaming for the goodies. Um, that's kind of where my first love of film started. And that's why I started taking up sword work, basically because I wanted to be a hero. The first film I'm going to show is probably the most famous film of all time for anybody that is interested in movies. It's a 1938 version um, of The Adventures of Robin Hood. Yeah. 